Uh, my pleasure to introduce Hans Bruni from TU Delft, Holland. So Hans will uh, talk about the effect of salinity on invisible displacement recovery. Thank you very much, Alexei. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, I remember that the first time I was here, uh, uh, Bush, the younger one, was fighting in a desperate fight with the statistics guy to prove that he had won the election. I think it was not as bad as it is now, but it was close, I think. And uh, that was in 2000, so that is uh, 17 years ago. And I've been working with Dan uh, uh, on a lot of topics. That is not only that uh, we together worked on a lot of topics and had lots of fun, like Dan says. I think it is a bunch of friends who are, by being friends, I think they are doing top-level research. That's my opinion, at least. But I am really happy that uh, Alexei with uh, Dennis Voskov of our department, they are continuing the collaboration we started. And also Grigory with Pacelli Zita is continuing, and I think now the poor oil companies, they are forced to give some uh, support to fundamental research, which they basically hate, but they have to do that in order to be able to do whatever economic things they like to do here. So I think in, uh, only in that respect, I think our collaboration was really successful. I, um, I wanted to uh, tell something about the topics which I have addressed with Dan Marchesin. And, uh, uh, I think, of course, uh, I have a little bit, uh, well, the engineering agenda, but the idea was that mathematics could learn us a lot about all these processes. And I think we started off with steam with solvents, which Dan immediately turned to steam without solvents. But then uh, we did it also with solvents. And there is always this kind of idea that you inject something like it's shown here. Let me see whether I can. Uh, uh, is there a the upper button? The upper button. Oh, okay. The red one. Oh, yeah. So there's always this: you inject something, and there is a solvent inside, and that means that there is some recirculation occurring, and then you get a solvent bank and then you produce, and the idea is that the solvent bank displaces the oil, and so that you virtually displace all the oil. And there are numerous examples in which this happens, and I think that has been a common theme with us. So we did it with steam with solvents. Uh, Alexei with uh, Negar did this with combustion of low volatile oil. And uh, uh, we were, for the three years that I was having a uh, support program here, we were interested in low salinity, which uh, was grossly underestimated. I will explain you a little bit why. And now we are also looking at condensing solvents. So... Um, <coughs> You're forgetting. In all of this, we did a lot of theory. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, we had to do a lot of theory to tackle the engineering. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. I'm sorry about that. But not only that, I think the theory really made us understand these basic ideas. And that was, uh, 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 yeah, it was a, a little bit by agenda. And of course, there is also a lot of theory which was done. Um, this is a very old picture, which is uh, showing us uh, that if you have a viscosity here and a pressure there, then uh, you have all kinds of methods to try and improve your oil recovery. Yeah? And there is, of course, it is a little bit of a tendency to uh, think that fossil fuels are uh, outdated. But what you can do is that if you can produce these more efficiently, uh, that saves a lot of energy. And I think the poor Dutch people who want to do wind, wind, windmills, if they only can find a way of doing more effectively the fossil fuels uh, in the world, they will be much more effective than with the windmill. So it is really also in that respect is important. So my hypotheses are f f the following. It is, uh, I am interested in what does salt concentration 
do with all of this, yeah? And it is possible to improve solvent recovery by tuning the salt concentration. Then the other thing which I was, uh, we were at that moment that we started four or five years ago with low salinity, which meant that you are injecting water with a little bit of salt. Then we were saying, okay, uh, we understand this picture and the only thing which we have to do is to solve the problems. But in the end, as I will explain to you, there's a lot of uncertain things about it. I think the presence of salts affects the solubility of neutral species in water and thus the enhanced water drive recovery of oil. Now, unfortunately, I was landing with my airplane yesterday evening and I intended to make a nice experiment in front of you, but you can easily do it yourself. If you're really bored with the guys from the airplane, you take a little bit of cola, you ask them a little bit of salt, and you put a little bit of salt in the cola and you will make a mess all around you, yeah? Because the <laughs> carbon dioxide is evolving like crazy and, and so, it is, uh, so if you hate the stewardess, it's always possible, yeah? Then um <coughs> what actually essentially came out of what we did until now with carbonated water flooding was that low salinity allows the use of higher solvent concentrations and the Riemann solution consists of salt concentration. Uh, oh yeah, uh, and I can make, uh, by uh, being a, a coward in your view, I think, by doing a numerical calculation and then plotting versus x over t, I can show you a little bit of the wave structure. And part of this wave structure, we analyzed this down for the carbon carbonated water flooding, but not for the example I'm showing now, but I sh can show that there are some challenges there as well to improve the recovery. What I completely underestimated when we started the project is how much work it was for me as a chemist to understand the chemistry of this, uh, well, this presence of salt on the sol solubility and activities and what have you. Yeah? And, uh, uh, we came up with the idea to use Gibbs phase rule to derive regression expressions which can be directly implemented in the simulators and not to call the uh, 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 geochemistry models to, to uh, uh, in the simulators themselves. Yeah? So the whole idea is that uh, <coughs> uh, that uh, the wetting properties of the surface depends on uh, surface complexes, which is depicted here with uh, 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 this, uh, the, these compounds, and then you have a charged surface, and at char the charged surface they have a, uh, so the adsorption of surface complexes, they are uh, very important in determining the wetting behavior, and everybody is saying that the wetting behavior is so important when you are doing low salinity salt, so I like to see whether uh, I understood that. Well, there is, this is, uh, I met Brady uh, uh, a month ago, I think, and he, is, uh, he has been part of this, is to understand all surface complexes here. So we have, uh, uh, well, you can see it in front of your eyes. You have all kinds of things which are reacting in the surface, and you can get the equilibrium constants. What well, actually the idea is that the equilibrium constants in uh, some adsorbed species and actual species are not different, so much different, yeah? And then what we calculate is the charge on the surface, here, and uh, so, uh, 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 let me see uh, how this picture goes. I think the whole idea here is that uh, this is at normal concentrations, and you see that there is a surface on the oil, a surface charge on the oil, a surface charge on the calcium carbonate, and when the surface charges are opposite, then the surfaces attract each other, and they expel the water film uh, in between, yeah? And you can imagine that this is really a very popular type of concept, so everybody believes this, yeah? So what you like is that the surface charge, everybody says, oh, water wet medium, I really like that. I will challenge that in a moment, but okay, that's what everybody says. And uh, then we have a, if the surface charges are the same, then a water film will stay in between. 
and uh, uh, a guy, George Hirasaki, who was also present at his recent conference, he has been uh, looking into this, and I think that is uh, a reasonable established theory. Yeah. So this is the whole idea. I have here, uh, as an example, I have here uh, <coughs> uh, calcite. I have here oil, and the idea is if the charges on the calcite and the charges on the oil are the same sign, and then we have here in between, we have a water layer, and the water layer, if that exists, makes the whole stuff water wet. On the other side, uh, and if discharges and discharges are opposite sign, then this whole water layer collapses, and you do not have a water layer, and then it is no longer water wet. Yeah, that's the uh, uh, idea. <coughs> And then uh, you look at uh, what is happening to the residual oil in the literature. And then uh, I used some kind of smoothing procedure using the uh, uh, <coughs> uh, 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 a method to uh, see what happens. But what you see is if the wetting index is really large, or if something is completely water wet, the residual oil saturation is really high. And if something is intermediate wet, the uh, uh, residual oil is really low. I use bootstrapping for this. It's a really simple method, which I can advise to all sociologists when they really like to keep a claim. Uh, and so we see that if something is water wet, the residual oil saturation is high. And that's exactly what you do not want, because if the residual oil saturation is high, then the amount of oil you get out is less. So the whole story about being water wet is not so uh, <coughs> uh, clear as it is supposed to be. But if you do that, then you can say that if you look at the, well, I look at reasonable uh, uh, situations that if you have a water bed medium, the residual oil saturation, as I said, is really high. It depends, of course, on which side of you are here with respect to the initial water saturation, but that is here. And that means that the uh, uh, at uh, high residual oil saturation, your endpoint permeabilities are really low, and that is what all petroleum engineers learn. That means that the mobility ratio is the advantage, low endpoint permeability, favorable mobility ratio, and fast, efficient oil recovery. So you have to imagine these guys who are developing these fields, they are really happy if the oil recovery is high, but they are not happy if it takes ages to produce it, and so what's happening if the if I am at a water wet medium, then I have if oh do I do that? Of course I do that. Oh uh, I think it is just a salt uh, concentration as it was said uh, on the uh, in the talk. And if I have uh, uh, the disadvantage is that I have a uh, um, high residual oil saturation. So if I wait long enough, I do not recover so much oil. So <coughs> the picture which everybody gets is this picture. And that is that if I have the oil recovery and I look at with respect, well, this is a picture which is put forward by Norman Moro uh, Morrow, who is, uh, well, he, well, rightly so he is God, eh, because he is really, he is really an excellent experimentator. And I think he is also a very friendly person. So what else do you want? Eh? But if he says so, you're not likely to go to argue. And so he put up this picture. So you, in, you have oil recovery, high salinity for a while. Then you put low salinity, so you put pure water in. And yes, you get a little bit more. And you think that this picture is really nice, but this picture gives you the wrong concept of what's going on. Because you saw that if you are lowering the Salinity, your residual oil saturation only gets higher. So you do not get suddenly more oil. And that gives a <coughs> inspiration for the, our aim is to give some mechanisms where low salinity enhances oil recovery unambiguously. Yeah? In previous example, we showed that carbonated water flatten can be enhanced by low salinity. And I shall show you a little bit how we uh, cheated ourselves into oh, into uh, showing this because it is true, yes, but it is not due to low salinity, but it is due to something else. It is uh, the effect of uh, enhanced solubility. And uh, we showed that the salinity uh, on 
uh, on emissible displacement. By way of example, we use the effect of demethyl ether on, on this because suddenly, uh, this is a secret, Shell is really interested in this, yeah? Uh, so, okay, uh, so that is why we were interested in this, yeah? So for carbonated water flooding, it is the following. You have a um, saturation profile which looks like this. I have the salinity that is just changed by putting in more chloride. And then you uh, we uh, inject it at the same pH as we had originally. So what can happen? And suddenly you get a pH wave. And it has taken a month of everybody's life here because we didn't trust it. And then we, we sh showed it in all kinds of different, but it is really there. And, uh, uh, well, the total velocity is also not the same. We come back to that in a moment. But the whole idea is if you have a high carbon dioxide concentration, the amount of decaying in the oil, because there is also carbon dioxide, is less. And so that is really helpful for your recovery because you have less, uh, uh, the oil which is staying behind is le uh, contains less uh, uh, decaying in this Decaying is an example for oil, and that means that what is left behind is effectively less. Yeah? So this is demethyl ether. The properties of this are, uh, uh, but I think, I do not know. This is always uh, what you are learning as a chemist, is that you have, fortunately, we have the structural formula of uh, demethyl ether. And that gives me a happy feeling, but uh, it doesn't learn me anything or teach me anything, yeah? But okay, anyway, it as a chemist, this gives me a happy feeling. You have here an oxygen and two uh, CH3 groups attached to it. That is demethyl ether, yeah? And it has a molecular mass of this and a lot of other things. And the important thing is that it is soluble in water. And uh <coughs> That's it, right? Huh? That's the, pro the property you want. That's the property you want. You want not only that it is soluble in water, but you like that it is uh, better soluble in the oil than in the water, and there is a uh, distribution equilibrium. Uh, f uh, hope the other uh, well, I must say that I have been wasting more, most of my time with this talk in to get properties of it. For instance, what is the partial molar volume of DME? Huh? And what is the uh, uh, equilibrium? partition equilibrium constant between DME. And then you start to look in the literature, and uh, fortunately, Rui Faradje there said, oh yeah, but there is a recent paper of somebody who addressed this problem, yeah? And then uh, in the end is the partial molar volume, which I also like to know. Then you know the partial molar volume as the uh, function of the number of methyl, ma methyl groups which are attached to the oxygen. And then you can extrapolate that in a straight line. And then you can find what is the partial molar volume of DME. So some of these important properties are really horrible to find. And like uh, Prausnitz says in his books, consider uh, whether measuring would take you so much more time than looking it up in the literature, yeah? Which I think is a correct statement. <coughs> what is important is that there is a activity coefficient here, uh, and the activity coefficient has to do with to, uh, a few of these constants, which is A, 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 B, and C. A, A, B is, of course, one single uh, parameter. The charge on one ion, the charge on the other ion, and then a ratio of the ionic strengths. The ionic, uh, uh, I have to be careful not to uh, get distracted, but uh, uh, was a Dutch guy who was born in the southeastern part of, uh, uh, of, of the Netherlands. And where are you going to study? Then you are going to study in Aachen. And he, uh, he's really, he's very world famous, was the Beye. And uh, he came up with this, uh, all these ideas. And of course, uh, which was a problem in the Second World War, Hitler thought, well, this is the guy we need for the, uh, for the scientific, uh, uh, our scientific institute. And of course, he had to sign his letters at that time with Heil Hitler. Yeah? And uh, so he did. So he, we, we, there was a room in Utrecht at the honor of the Beye rightly so, and then suddenly somebody invented by reading a history book that the Bayer signed his letters with Heil Hitler, and they wanted to 
rename this room, and that was a whole story in the Netherlands. But anyway, the main thing, it's a nice anecdote, but the main thing is that the ionic strength times a constant, uh, I, and the ionic strength is the sum of the concentration times the square of the uh, uh, charge, and you see that the, uh, uh, the concentration divided by the concentration in pure water has to do with 10 to the power minus C times the ionic strength. And that gives you uh, this effect which I just mentioned, is that if you want to teach the stewardess in the airplane and you put a little bit of salt in your Coca-Cola, then uh, all the carbon dioxide comes out. Yeah. <coughs> I skip this because otherwise it becomes too much time. And uh, I only want to say that the partial molar volume of anything in water is always low. And that is because if you, in, in water, you have always this type of cage structures here. And you can also hide a molecule in there, which means that if you add an extra molecule to the solution, then it doesn't uh, take so much volume. And then we, uh, so this plot has taken me most of the time to prepare this talk, uh, to get an equation in which I can just know that the partial molar volume is of DME is that, which in the end turns out to be a negligible effect anyway. Yeah? <coughs> so this is the uh, 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 the uh, re uh, relations which I looked for so desperately, more fraction of DME. Uh, uh, in the hydrocarbon phase is here with respect to the uh, mole fraction of DME in the aqueous phase and you see that it is uh, <coughs> uh, uh, <coughs> uh, yeah so it is the, the ratio the partition coefficient so that means that in the aqueous phase has very small amounts of DME dissolved in it this number is really high and if I correct it with this uh, uh, activity coefficient then uh, I can collapse uh, everything, but not as, effi uh, as efficient as uh, you did just a moment, because there is one curve which is clearly outside. Uh, 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 but many of these curves collapse when you are using one single value of the activity coefficient. So let me see, because so <coughs> I talked about this in. Uh, so you you like. Uh, 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 I'm I'm now already in uh, in, uh, in 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 what do you call it damage time or what do they call this in the soccer games? Uh, the uh, we have always oop. We have to always we have these spacious equations. So for the water, the density of the aqueous phase times one minus the mole fraction of DME in the water, and then uh, that is the accumulation term. Ah, gosh. The convection term, and uh, with Dan, I spent I do not know a whole uh, session where we were together for a month. I think we spent on uh, looking what the uh, what the what the right way was to incorporate the diffusion coefficient, and that it was important also. But let me not dwell on that. So I have an oil equation, <coughs> and X O is the mole fraction of. Uh, uh, DME in the oil phase, and these two are related, so they are not independent. And you have the DME equation, which is the sum of those. If you are desperate to look at the uh, uh, change in velocity, which is 1%, so who cares, then you have to uh, take these three equations into account. Otherwise, you take one equation into account, and you assume that the velocity is constant. And I have a chloride equation, which is uh, uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> I have a chloride equation which is uh, determining ionic strength, so to see what is the ionic strength or what is the salt doing to this uh, equation. Well, the usual boundary conditions, you will believe it. Let me just skip a few of these things. Uh <coughs> Here I have a, um, a plot which I get for a saturation and concentration. I get for, uh, if I solve these equations, I did this with COMSOL, XW and XO, I did this with X over T to show you that it eventually is a kind of hyperbolic problem. So uh, <coughs> then, uh, <coughs> so the saturation profile is a typically buckley levered profile. The mobility ratio is really favorable, so I get almost a, uh, 
a, a shock-like behavior uh, and a very small reaction, which you cannot really see very well. You see that the, uh, uh, the waves, the composition waves are uh, uh, what are, yeah, I am really used to show things like that, uh, as opposed to you. You, you like to show it in, 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 in a saturation space. I like to show it like how, how does it work in, uh, uh, from 0 to x over t. Uh, 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 and then you see that you have here these waves, composition waves, and the composition waves are uh, upstream of the saturation waves. And then the uh, <coughs> uh, if I am uh, going to uh, look at a situation where I have a constant high salt concentration, which is depicted here, chloride, or when I try start to inject a very low salt concentration, I get this. And then you see that if I do that, then these waves are moving slightly faster. That is due to the uh, uh <coughs> partition coefficient. And here. I was intending to show you, because it is very interesting, to know what is the pumping cost in terms of energy. I personally believe in this, so you, there are a lot of people who are uh, plotting uh, uh, dollars and everything else. I only like to think in terms of energy, and I want to know how much costs do I spend on energy. And the pumping costs are the, the, most, well, the largest costs anyway. And of course, what happens if I wait long enough, then my pumping costs are larger than my, well, yeah, I think pumping costs are 70 to 80% of everything, so you can correct it a little bit. They are more than anything else. I try to show you this, but I'm not going on to this, that <coughs> uh, on this. Um, I have now a curve what is the real advantage of low salinity? The real advantage of low salinity that I am capable of injecting much higher concentrations of DME or carbon dioxide for that matter, which we did in the previous time. And that is really uh, giving you the improved oil recovery. Like is shown on this, this is accumulative oil in per kilogram in time of days. I took a limited uh, size and then you see that if you have the uh, low shell and the high concentration, you get the highest recovery. And that the low shell, which is this one, is not particularly favorable just by being low shell. <coughs> so conclusions. The mechanisms of low salinity enhanced ore recovery are not well understood. That is what I think is uh, 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 clear now. Eh? We, we see that this whole story about water wetness Actually, to be frank with you, I had a colleague in our department who said, why the hell do people like water wetness? Uh, I said, yes, well, of course, because water wetness is so nice. Eh? And that is typically, you, you, uh, I do not know about uh, you, Fred, but you, you get dragged by this same illogical aspects to tend to believe something, and it has nothing to do with that. The presence of salts affects the solubility of neutral species in the water. Uh, that was what I said with the stewardess. So if you have li a little salt in it, you can dissolve more. Uh, low salinity, that is just a big thing, allows you to use higher solvent concentrations. And that can indeed be used to improve the oil recovery, which we showed with carbon dioxide and with DME. And then uh, <coughs> Mutually soluble solvents like carbon dioxide can be dissolved at higher concentrations. I said that already in a low salinity aqueous phase. The propagation rate of DME in an aqueous phase is strongly affected by the propagation rate of the, of the dissolved salt. I am sure that I need Dan to prove whether they are really one wave or they are still two waves. But I, as far as I'm concerned, it looks like there is one wave, the salt, a DME wave. I think so. The Riemann solution. I'm. Uh, I'm really all too curious to really do the Riemann solution. But this is just from the numerics to say, okay, this will be the structure. Uh, <coughs> the cumulative oil recovery in one example is negatively Im influenced by low salinity. So it's not necessarily that low salinity is all making us happy. And uh, I think that uh, one of the things which I didn't see until now. 
well, maybe at favorable circumstances, we can see it, that we can see a solvent bank, because a solvent bank is really nice, because then you recover all the oil. And then, uh, uh <coughs> so what it looks like that in this case, all the cases I did with Dan, we always get a solvent bank, and we're already oh so happy, but here it appears not to be the, the case. So, questions, yeah? Yeah, that's a very good uh, uh, question. Well, you you improve it, uh, but uh, not to the extent that you, if you have a solvent bank where you can virtually recover 100% of the oil, and here you have to accept that uh, there is a uh, uh, that you you improve it, but li to a limited extent, yeah, okay. by just improve increasing the concentration, yeah. <coughs> Experiments. We I did not analyze the uh, Riemann solution. I think this can be definitely used as a basis to. Well, there is of course this uh, immiscible flooding type of um, uh, theory. Let me see whether I can. Oh. And so you can say, okay, I go along a uh, 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 tie line for a while, I jump to the other tie line, and then uh, uh, because of the chloride concentration, I jump to the other tie line because of the end of the concentration like that. That is a g as far as I, uh, as I got, and so you will be very disappointed with me, I'm sure, yeah?